My lords and my ladies, a hypsomatic version of the life of one of the greatest men of all times. And he called his cat the mighty Hibani, Sphere Gasser. Now here was a cat who carried so much wiggage. He was gigless. He could not find a wheel to turn. He sounded all the hubcaps within reach, but Nathan shaken. He could not connect. Hungry, his threads thin, it was a drag. Bald, he's nowhere, cat's not picking up. And that coming right after a big bug size bring down from the Nazis put on him. You see, this cat was born at Ulm in Germany on March 14th, 1879. Now, not digging their lick, you see, of these double square kicks these, these cats are putting down. He saved his beans and bind after bind. Finally, he swung with a Swiss passport, swooped the scene, and lit in the land of the cool to prove and groove with the alpine heads. So now he's made it. It's a drag and no gig. Well, he messed around a little bit, looking to pick up on a job here and there and so on and so forth, and he finally got on a light boot repair kick. That's the only thing this cat could get to do. It was so light that he was about to dig some boot soup when a buddy cat hipped him and needed to buy a burn in the idea factory. So the hip on it took off to sound the man for the gig. Now, it took him 14 hours to convince this cat that he could tell a good idea from a bad one, you see what I mean. And he still would have missed if the cat hadn't heard that he was suffering from the gold shots in front, so he really dug the gig, gig on a pity kick. He was such a sweet, groovy cat, Earth Angel, you see what I mean, that this short green kick cooled his living strain. Now ready, really ready, he looked around and finally zeroed in on a real fly chick. Made the legal move with her, rang the chapel bells of joy, and out in this, come swung out of this beauty spin, uh, came two little Mars heads, a boy and a girl, you see. His pad now jumped with the sweet swing and light of life. He delegated his routine job dues to the third frame of his subconscious mind and proceeded to lay back into the longest goof in the history of that far-out wig stretch. He became the king of all space heads. He goofed through the zonosphere and the vaultosphere and the routosphere and the hipposphere and the flipposphere and the zipposphere and the gonosphere and the way gonosphere. He was way on out there. And as a matter of fact, he was gone so long and was so far out that when he returned and cooled and dug what he brought back with him, he flipped. Shook the poor cat so bad he couldn't leave his pad for two weeks. Take that scene. And sat in the sack every lick at the time. It was not only too much for him, it was too much for the spear. This we will dig later. Well, being a tough cat in front, he was soon on his feet. He sucked up a little juice, you see what I mean. Took his pen in hand and got it down on paper. Now, this here paper that I'm going to hip you about caused Max Bourne, a top-flight physicist cat, some time later to state the greatest gasser of all spearhead book kicks is Let Me Hip You, Volume 17, Series 4, Yearbook of Physics, 1, 1900 and jump in five. When this book hit the streets, it hit the spacehead cats hard. No cat mentioned it for four years, and no cat moved for five years, no. Here and there, a cat would dig a single hole, but it was so far out he couldn't dig anyone in his cat circle to cut it up with, so the cat would be hung, dig. Finally, this great lick started to spark the space head grapevine, and all the space cats were tuning in. One cat said, yeah, I shuffled 222 times, come out the same every time, seemed like me, like the lick is so. And the cat said, I'm with you. Where do we go to surrender? The grapevine blew so hard, they pressed a better gig on the hip ernie, a top hubcap and summit head of the University of Zurich. A real cool cat, Freddie Adler, stepped aside to make it possible with this remark. He say, if we can pick up this here king of spaceheads, the great Hippione, let's make the scene at once. 
Let this great cat take the chair. I'll make the stool. You see what I mean? He was a real hip cat. Now, you see what I mean? What caused all this furor was the fact that the hip iron had wailed it down in the space had cat's paper. He stood in the space had cat's paper. He said, the scientific journal heads, he said, you go on out the latitude 777 and longitude 444 and, and, and get out there at the unveiling of the big heater. And they say, you put some, some necklaces around that ship and hold it real cool. Anchors, anchors around like necklaces, see what I mean? And hold it real cool and get out every brownie and camera that you can grab you and lay your hands the pond, and they say at the unveiling the heater start snap 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 snapping all them pictures and they say if you snap it all the way through to the finale of that unveiling and switch it downstairs and put it in the treatment he say you're going to find on one of them pictures in a far out crazy gone uncouth headed canyon in a way out valley the great mother cosmo head that's what he put in the paper that's what flipped everybody. Everybody flipping all over the place. Cats, I can say, couldn't be so. Couldn't be this, couldn't be that. Finally, two English space heads picked up on him. <laughs> I said, yes, a man. I said, what you think about that hip on? He said, well, I believe the cat's with it all the way. He looked like he got it down here pretty groovy. He looked like he got the legs straight and up to date. He say, let's you and me make a little history here. We'll tote this here news into the treasure cat and sound him for a little expedition money and put the scene down and make a little history. Cat said, that's right. So they stomped in to see the treasure cat say, what you say, Mr. T? Say, it's cool in here. It's cool, nice and cool in the vault. Say, yeah, it is pretty groovy. He said, what's on your mind, boys? He said, well, uh, you ever hear about a cat called uh, the Hippiney? He said, oh, the Hippiney. He said, no, I never hear that cat. He said, what's a cat blow? He said, well, he's a scientific spacehead cat, you see what I mean? And he blew a little item in the, in the spacehead journal would say that if we go out to latitude 777 and longitude 444 and we put a necklace around the boat with the anchors, you know, and anchor real cool and crazy and get out all them brown cameras, you see, and we start snap, 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 snapping the unveiling of the heater, he done say that in a far out corner, in an uncouth headed canyon, away up there in the vaults will lay the great swinging mother Cosmo head. The cat said, that's good for the wall. He said, that's what I say. That's why we're here. You know what I mean? We figured you dig the lick. He said, of course, that's good for the wall. He said, I reckon I'm glad you boys come over. He said, uh, uh, what's this little gig going to cost? Like Spence like? Space head cat said, oh, it ain't going to cost nothing. Like some of the little old uh, two million clans. Man, what do you mean stomping in here like a madman? Jumping up and down, talking clean out of your skull. Tired as things is about two million. Is you crazy? Some cat sit on and dream up a big skull that something is some. Did the cat see it? He said, no. He said, well, that's what I'm trying to explain. You get talking completely crazy out of your mind. I said, what's the cat's real name? He said, Albert Einstein. He said, just what I thought. Some far out Levantine cat going to get you way out on a long, thin limb and snap it off. But you see what happened. The space head and the hip on his lick was too strong for Mr. T. So Mr. T come up with the two million clams. So here they swing on out here. They get out to latitude 777 and latitude 444. And they got the expedition all tight and all cool. And they put the anchors around the boat like a necklace. See what I mean? Hold it real cool and steady. And boom, here come the unveiling of the big heater. And these cats are snap, snap, snapping pictures this all over the place. They're snapping it through the legs. They're snapping it upside down. They're snapping it this way. They're snapping it that way. They're snapping it that double snapping it. They're snapping it every way. They're snapping it. Snap it. You see it? Right? It was over. Downstairs they go to develop these uh, these negatives, negatives, see what I mean, and see where the picture was. So they got 4,424 pictures, and they come down to, uh, the they said, Cat said, you see it yet? said, no, I ain't seen it yet, but he sure got some crazy jazz. They picked up on some wild pictures, they're pretty wild pictures. And they go to 2,227, you see it yet? said, no, I didn't dig it yet. No, I ain't seen it, but no, it's here someplace. He said, that's what I believe, too. And get the 3,227 pictures. said, man, it's a long time coming. But he said, yeah, I know that, but just show some crazy shots. Let's keep going. So they get to 4,109. You see what I mean? When the cat said, they said, well, look like the hip iron put us on a bad riff here. Say, so if the cat, you know, made a little miscalculation. He said, well, we're going this far. Might as well go to rest. And on the last picture, the last picture they done developed in a great big crazy far off corner in an uncouth headed chasm was the longest neon tube these cats ever dug in their life. The great Cosmo-headed swinger. 
And that's how it jumped. But like the hip honest say, let's play it cool and let's play it sweet and let's keep thinking right and we're going to be with it a long time.